If I told you the coins in your pocket might one day be melted into airplane parts, hospital tools, or even brand new coins, you'd probably laugh and say, okay, now you're just making stuff up. But the truth is stranger and cleaner and somehow more beautiful than that. Money doesn't vanish when it gets old. It changes shape, trades faces, and keeps working long after its original owner forgets it even existed. Every coin you've ever spent, whether it bought you a childhood lollipop, a bus ticket at midnight, or a newspaper from a shop that no longer exists, has an afterlife. A second story. Because when a coin gets too scratched, bent, corroded, or simply replaced by a newer design, it doesn't retire to a beach and cocktails. It's pulled, collected, and sent on a journey most people never imagine. Some coins come back as fresh currency. Some become cables in skyscrapers or wiring in hospital machines. Some disappear into industries we never think about. A lucky few become collectibles. The celebrities of the coin world, protected in tiny plastic coffins. But nearly all of them get a second chance. But before we jump into the molten metal chaos, let's take a step back. Because every coin has two parallel biographies. The life it lives out in the world, clinking, clanking, traveling, and the hidden life it owes to chemistry. Coins look tiny and insignificant, but they are basically armored vehicles of value. Copper, nickel, zinc, steel, each chosen because they can survive decades of pockets full of sand, washing machine rodeos, and the horrifying environment known as a toddler's mouth. They resist corrosion, hold up under heat, and feel just heavy enough that your brain goes, yes, this is money. That weight, that's trust. For over 2,500 years, from ancient Greek drachmas to Roman denarii, humans have trusted metal more than any other form of currency. Paper burns, plastic expires, but metal? Metal survives, it endures, it travels. Think about it, a coin might pass through thousands of hands before it's done. It buys, it saves, it slips into couch crevices. And over decades, the portraits and dates on its face erode. The once royal portrait now looks like someone who forgot their skincare routine for 80 years. Dates vanish like deleted text messages. Ridges wear smooth until a vending machine stares at the coin in confusion and says, Buddy, who even are you? Governments prefer coins that look, well, like coins. They must be recognizable, secure, and not so battered that vending machines or coin sorters choke on them. So quietly, like a secret society of accountants, the financial system filters out the unfit ones. Coin sorting machines in banks detect them. Retail registers send them back. Armored cash trucks unknowingly chauffeur them to their final performance review. When enough damaged or outdated coins accumulate, they're gathered, boxed, and shipped to specialized facilities. Some countries keep huge vaults where recalled currency gathers, a sort of national coin graveyard. Though graveyard is a dramatic word, because in reality, these places are the beginning of a transformation. The Royal Mint in the UK, the US Mint, mints in Japan, India, South Korea, Canada, Everywhere there's currency, there's a system for bringing dead coins back to life. When Canada retired the penny in 2012, they didn't just throw them away. Billions, with a B, were collected, melted, and reborn as new metal for industries. That's a lot of retired pennies. Imagine the sound if you dropped all of them at once. Actually, don't. Your ears would never forgive you. And then comes the heat. We're not talking kitchen stove heat. We're talking industrial, dragon belly, the floor is literally lava kind of heat. Furnace is glowing at over 1000 degrees Celsius, hot enough to turn a coin into glowing soup in seconds. Entire containers of coins pour in, and their faces, presidents, monarchs, national emblems, dissolve like ice cubes in a frying pan. Gone. Erased. Identity stripped. The metal softens, runs, and pools together. This isn't destruction in a sentimental sense. It's purification. When coins are melted, impurities are separated, and the metal reveals itself for what it really is, reusable matter. Copper sinks, zinc floats, nickel finds its layer, the metals separate by density and chemistry, and skilled technicians draw off the different streams. 
From molten pools, the metal is poured into molds and cast into ingots, solid, rectangular bars that look boring. Until you remember what they mean. Raw currency reborn. These ingots are not art. They are the material foundation for the next generation. They are examined, tested, and weighed. Cataloged by batch and origin. Every nation tracks this carefully. When you're literally recycling money, accountability isn't optional. Imagine the bookkeeping. Every ounce accounted for. Every bar logged. Those ingots move to rolling mills where massive cylinders press and stretch the metal into thin sheets with incredible uniformity. Think of a pasta machine on an industrial scale. Out comes a shiny metallic ribbon, perfectly flat and ready. From these sheets, machines punch out disks, blanks, or planchettes as mint workers call them. These blanks are anonymous, smooth, bright circles with no story yet written on them. And then the stamping. Huge mechanical presses, some with a history as long as a lifetime. Slam down with thousands of tons of force and imprint national symbols. A monarch's face, an animal, a date. Something to anchor identity in the tiny object. Those edge ridges you sometimes feel aren't decoration. They were invented centuries ago to stop people from shaving coins. Literally slicing off tiny silvers of precious metal back when coins were made of silver and gold. Humans have always been creative when it comes to cheating money. Modern machines still stamp those edges because that tiny detail protects value and authenticity. The machine stamp, the design appears crisp, and the blank becomes coin. You can almost hear the metal sigh. It's worth pausing for a surprising fact. A single modern coin press can strike hundreds of coins in a minute. The speed and precision are astonishing, but the human element hasn't vanished. Designers, engravers, and technicians decide the art and the chemistry, and statisticians track the runs. The result is currency that looks and feels right, that rings with a certain timber when you drop it in a jar. That clink is not accidental. Sound is part of trust. Drop a coin on a table. The sound it makes is a built-in alarm system. Every coin has its own acoustic fingerprint, and scammers hate that. Not every melted coin returns to the mint. Some coins decide, you know what, I'm done being chump change. And governments agree, because sometimes it's cheaper, smarter, and honestly more interesting to let those metals go off and live a new life. Copper and nickel are always in demand, always booked, never resting. Industrial buyers snatch up these reclaimed alloys and transform them into wires, machinery, stainless steel, electronics, and more. A penny's copper could become household wiring. Nickel may become surgical instruments or components in stainless steel used in skyscrapers. Steel may be reinforced into construction projects. The metal that once paid for subway rides might one day hold a building's beams together. That journey is poetic, but it's also painfully practical. Recycling coins saves energy, reduces the environmental cost of mining new ore, and keeps valuable metals circulating in the economy. That environmental benefit is concrete. Mining requires massive earth moving, chemical processing, and energy. Recycling metal requires far less energy, sometimes up to 90% less. So every melted coin is a small victory for the planet. But make no mistake, this whole operation runs on economics, not warm, fuzzy, earth-hugging feelings. If a country spends more minting a coin than the coin is worth, the math fails. That's why governments watch production costs like a hawk. Fun fact, the US penny is literally worth less than its production cost. Canada took one look at that math in 2012 and said, nope, retiring billions of pennies from circulation. Melted down, turned useful again. No tears shed. But the coins are rebels at heart. You can't easily wrangle them. People hoard them, hide them, lose them. During the pandemic, the US experienced a weird coin shortage. Not because coins vanished, but because they were trapped in jars, drawers, and under couch cushions. In effect, the country was sitting on billions of dollars in idle metal. Other nations have similar stories. China once faced banks deluge with small coins when customers rolled up sacks and dropped them at branches. Too many coins can be as much of a problem as too few. And while most coins follow the recycling path, a precious few escape the furnace. Some are hoarded by collectors. 
Some are simply mistakes, misprints, wrong years, or oddities that become valuable precisely because they're different. The world of numismatics is a subculture enthralled by anomalies. A penny stamped in the wrong year or with an inverted design might be worth more than its weight in gold to the right buyer. The market for rare coins is sometimes absurd. Thousands, even millions of dollars change hands over tiny, misstruck pieces of metal. So while most coins head to the fire, a handful get VIP treatment, cleaned, cataloged, and locked away. Different countries write their own recycling adventures. When the euro replaced many national currencies in Europe, vaults filled with francs, lyre, pesatas, and other coins that were suddenly obsolete. Those national metals didn't disappear, they were reworked into the new currency, repurposed or sold into markets that needed metal. In Japan, where raw metal is imported and conservation is crucial, recycling coins is part of an ongoing resource strategy. In India, demonetization events have forced rapid and large-scale recollection and recycling programs. Each nation's coin story is a reflection of its economy and priorities. There's also a fascinating human side to this. Coins carry history. A metal atom in your pocket might once have been part of an 18th century kettle, a medieval nail, or an ancient tool. Metal circulates through human objects for centuries. It is remade, stamped, melted, and remade again. That makes coins tiny time machines. Touching a worn coin can be a tactile bridge to a past economy, a past life. Behind all of this, security runs like a heartbeat. When you're transporting literal money by the truckload, Alarms, vaults, guards, scanning systems, and paperwork thicker than a dictionary are non-negotiable. Missing metal equals missing money. Coin recycling is less magical rebirth and more industrial accountancy with flames. There are also surprising programs people rarely hear about. In the US, the Mint runs a mutilated coin redemption program where they encourage people to send in burned, corroded, or crushed coins. And if they can be verified, the Mint will reimburse their value. It's a kind of metal triage, rescuing value from accidents that would otherwise be written off. In other places, mints run campaigns encouraging people to return old coins or demonetized currency to banks for proper processing. Now zoom out. What does this mean for the future? Cash use is declining in many societies as payments become digital, contactless and invisible. But that doesn't make coins irrelevant. If anything, a world with less cash makes the metal in coins more valuable for industry. As coin circulation declines, a new kind of urban mining is rising. Systems that harvest metal from old coins, electronics, and other urban sources to feed industry's demand for raw materials without digging new mines. Coins may vanish from tills, but their atoms will be woven into the infrastructure of the future. Imagine, for a moment, a bucket of coins transformed into parts for a wind turbine. A coin that once bought chewing gum could end up inside a helicopter, inside a hospital, propelling a vehicle or reinforcing a bridge. The coin's face vanishes, but its matter keeps serving civilization. That's a strange kind of immortality. And through all that big industrial transformation, humans remain sentimental creatures. We keep coins not just for cash value, but for memories. A child's first saved coins. A sentimental souvenir from a trip. A coin dropped by a parent in a piggy bank. People protect these objects, and sometimes that's the real reason coins go missing from circulation. They're not trash. They're tokens of personal history. Before we wrap this up, here's a twist. Recycling money is ancient. Empires did it long before recycling bins existed. Romans melted down conquered currency to stamp their emperor's faces on top. The original rebranding. Medieval kings reused old coin metal with zero hesitation. We've always understood this truth. Value shouldn't be wasted. Recycling money is not a new idea. It's an essential human practice that links resourcefulness to governance. So what should you take away from this sudden life of your coins? First, coins are not disposable objects with a single use. They are durable material that travels across time and purpose. Second, there is a sophisticated, secure, and often surprising industry quietly extracting value from things we throw away. Third, the metal in your pocket has stories and potential far beyond the coffee it bought today. And finally, the smallest, most overlooked objects, those dull, heavy disks we call coins, play a quiet but vital role in a global economy that tries, imperfectly, 
to waste less and reuse more. So next time you find a coin in the street and consider leaving it, pick it up. You are holding something that might have been around for decades and will probably be around for decades more, perhaps in a very different form. You're holding a tiny recycled promise that even as designs change and technologies march forward, value persists. Coins don't die, they transform. If this fascinated you, do two things before you go. One, give the video a thumbs up so more curious minds can find it. Two, subscribe and hit the bell because next time we'll take another everyday thing apart and show you how it keeps being useful long after you think it's finished. We've only scratched the surface. Stay curious. Check your pockets. You might be holding a future.